You might not remember it, but you too were busy trying to make sense of everything when you were born. And on the foundations of the newborn brain, you have grown and become you. The development of a newborn brain is a carefully coordinated process. The last three months of gestation are critical and prepare the brain to take in the outer world and learn all the new skills needed to cope with it. Premature birth interferes with this process, and a lot of the brain wiring is having to happen outside the protected walls of the womb. Thanks to the incredible progress in medical care, most premature babies now survive. But we have a new medical challenge, as the most premature babies remain at high risk of brain injuries. At least a quarter will have difficulties down the road in critical areas such as movement, coordination, vision, hearing, speaking and learning. To understand the complex recipe of premature brain injuries, we need to pick apart the ingredients. Nurture is a key part. The way the brain grows depends on what it is experiencing. The surrounding environment is constantly changing and imposing new challenges. And two challenges that are known to cause brain injuries are infections and shortages of blood and oxygen flow to the brain. Now, here's where my research fits in. Imagine brain development as a play. The environment keeps writing the words of the script, but it doesn't do so alone. Each baby has a particular set of tools available for writing, and no two babies have the exact same set. The set of tools is the genome, and I am interested in the tools used for the chapters about infections and oxygen shortages. In some babies, the chapter will be written in pencil, in others, in permanent marker, the marks of which will bleed through the pages as the script keeps being written and the brain develops. In my first year, I have looked at the DNA of over 200 premature babies, and I have focused on a few genetic variants that we think affect how baby responds to infections and oxygen shortages. I wanted to see if these variants were more frequent in the babies that go on to develop the injury. And my hypothesis was partly confirmed, as I found that some of these variants are indeed associated with movement and learning difficulties by the time these children are five years old. Imagine if we could know earlier in pregnancy which babies uh, have a particularly unfavorable combination of variants, which would put them at high risk, for example, in case of an infection. We would then be able to mobilize all resources in a timely manner, from more frequent monitoring during pregnancy, to specialist intensive care at birth, to things like physiotherapy or speech and language therapy in childhood, to treat, but also prevent the brain injuries. I believe all babies deserve a chance of a healthy brain development and to reach their full potential throughout life. Thank you.